Welcome to Gen Con 2018. This is Roll for Crit, and we're here to talk about Werewolf now. Two big Werewolf titles got released, One Week and Legacy. First, we're going to talk about One Week because we actually played that, because that makes sense. <laughs> uh, this one actually lasts longer. It's not a simple one night and people dying. It's much more of a moving around a castle, Matt Ludwig's castle to be exact, and trying to guess where the werewolves are. It's basically uh, Ultimate Werewolf with a board and mm -hmm. cards that you actually get to play beyond just uh, you know your character's action at night. But what happens is everyone gets a roll in the beginning and they hide and they put in this little tower character which is represents them. But there's also three servants who also get them. Uh, in the game we played, there were five villagers, two werewolves, and the Tanner, who the Tanner being like the person who wants to just die. <laughs> yeah, he wants to be voted out of the group, essentially. But you, everyone has the same hand, and each of these hands have a day action, night action. The day action is just movement. Nothing really special. But the night action, on your turn, you can you, when you open your eyes, you'll play one of your night actions. You can totally lie and say, I'm playing the seer when you're not. But you do have to announce something. Right. And that card will also be played face down, so people can sort of see a, a pseudo face up discard pile, your day being open, your night closed. So for your, your card counters out there, you might be able to figure things out. Right. <laughs> but those actions will let you actually do things involving the tokens, usually like look at your own, maybe swap two without knowing what they are. So there becomes this whole hassle. You may have started as a werewolf, but you may hit become every other role without even knowing it. <laughs> yeah, and also the room that you're in matters a lot because you can only interact, except with maybe one exception, with the people in that room with you. So if you really want to figure out if you think someone's the werewolf, you want to do something with their token maybe, uh, you need to make sure you're in that room with them. They might move out and you might be out of luck. And of course you can change player order, which becomes a big uh, issue because sometimes you want to make sure you go last to get the most information. Or in the very case, sometimes move last so you can move into an empty room so no one can interact with you. <laughs> yeah, uh, which I sometimes did in this game. This really felt to me like they took Ultimate Werewolf and said, or One Night Ultimate Werewolf, I should say, and said, uh, let's make this a little more of an actual game and less of the social, like pure social deduction that Werewolf is. Like there's, you actually have things that you can do and move around a board and I feel like there's more to, th to think about it that's concrete yeah, that I you think, can look at. Yeah, I think there's, this game's for two people that made me think of it. Like <laughs> A, the really people who are really good at card counting and reading like, okay, he moved here and here, mm -hmm. said he played that, but that's there and doing that, like the really good, or the people who like to play Werewolf Drunk. <laughs> Because this game got really chaotic, and like, now I start off as a werewolf, the next thing I'm like, I might be, I don't know. Yeah, I definitely think this is one where, to get the most out of it, you really have to have a group who likes accusing people as well. Like, if everybody just keeps all their info to themselves, you're not going to have that much fun. You really need to be sharing and lying, potentially. Yeah, it was really interesting because I, I was the werewolf first, and I didn't, so I didn't share much. As was I. <laughs> and then, well, as soon as I switched within round two, I started sharing everything, and then right. I got Tan I thought I got Tanner at the end, so I was trying to sort of accuse myself, <laughs> but we accused someone else who turned out to be a villager who swapped with like me and one other person made me the werewolf, but therefore I won. <laughs> yeah. So you may not think you're going to win, and all of a sudden you win. <laughs> yeah, some very strange chaotic things can happen like that, and there are multiple room tiles, and you don't necessarily use all of them for every game, so that can add some variability for you. And the game plays actually very quickly, and that's one thing, again, that's why I think you got to have those discussions, because you don't have that much time to gather data. And yeah, we were shocked when we were like, wait, we're voting now? Yeah, we're like, this is the last night, oh, we have to make this n move count really a lot. Uh, so you, you got to be aware of that. And I wonder if maybe, I haven't looked too far because I know this is on Kickstarter, but I wonder if there's variants of shorter or longer play you could do. That'd be interesting. But in addition, there was also Werewolf Legacy here. Now, we can't talk too much about it because it's Legacy. You don't want to know too much. <laughs> but the way this one works is it plays over 16 games. The first one really is just they have your own understand what Werewolf's like and how this will work. But the rest will actually affect and the game, and you actually have this big leather-bound journal. Diary, they call it. Yes. Very important distinction. <laughs> and in it, you'll write down what the werewolves attack, who lived, and the families, because sometimes people will vote on not based on the entire village, but just the families and things like that. And in addition, what's also nice for a small thing, that I've only, some legacy games are started to do, but if, let's say you filled up this book and want to play again, 
you can just buy another one for thirty dollars. Right, which so, is half the pri retail price of the base game. Right, which is really nice. Which means this does have a lot of replayability compared to other legacy games. And one thing I liked too, uh, looking over the rules, is that you're, it's a game that requires a minimum of nine players, but you are free to switch people in and out in between sessions. You know, there's no hard and fast rule that you got to keep that group because. Of course, it can be hard to have that many players in one place at one time. Uh, but we did grab a copy of this, and I am very, very interested to try it and to see how people react and how it how it works out. Jonathan will be the werewolf every single time. It's in his bloodline. <laughs> so uh, this is uh, One Week Ultimate Werewolf and Ultimate Werewolf Legacy from Bezier Games. If you like werewolf, there's no shortage of stuff for you. <laughs> Like and subscribe for more Gen Con 2018 coverage. And enter our contest for a chance to win some Gen Con games in the description down below.